Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, August 4th to Saturday, August 10th. Okay, so last week we transitioned from July to August, vibration of seven to eight. So of course, July offered us an opportunity to kind of find balance and peace and harmony and acceptance in our lives, especially with all the kerfuffle that popped off as we entered into cancer season and the solstice hit and those double back to back full moon and Capricorns really illuminated what was ending, what we were providing a closure, a finality, a completion to. The eight energy of August is definitely indicating that we're in for a major, major shakeup, major change, major transformation, major transformation where power is concerned, especially as we anchor in this new version of self. Now, I'm going to say that last week was a semi relatively quiet week in the cosmos only because we didn't have a whole lot going on but of course some of those energy pop-offs definitely amplified where we are going through major major energy and emotional changes we were essentially building towards the new moon in leo that is coming at us hot and heavy here we completed venus's last full week in leo energy as she's preparing to make a major shift we were completing Mercury's last full week of being direct because, of course, he's going retrograde soon. We did have a lot of moon days helping us to emotionally refine our inner realm. We also had a lot of conjunctions, a lot of resets, a lot of endings slash beginnings, really preparing us for this major pivot point coming at us this week. Okay, so what am I talking about, you may ask? Well, let's do a rundown. This week, we have the new moon popping off in Leo energy. That is a breakdown slash breakthrough pivot point, major change of heart, major transformation of self that is going to launch us, catapult us on a new path in a new direction. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, moving out of the Leo energy, moving into Virgo energy just hours after the new moon in Leo pops off. And then after that, not only 24 hours later, we have Mercury going retrograde. Okay, he's in his rulership. He's going to go retrograde at four degrees in Virgo energy. That is going to be a big deal. We are going to end up going back into the Leo energy. Um, again, if you haven't listened to the August energy forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that uh, to get the highs, the lows, and everything in between. But Mercury going retrograde in his rulership, definitely going to amplify and intensify what a Mercury retrograde is all about. And of course, we're going to have the Lionsgate portal. I hesitate to even talk about it. I do have a rant prepared here in a second about it. I feel like we have to talk about it because things are just not right where the Lionsgate information is concerned. So let's back burner that, but we are going to kind of include it as this week's major energy shifts. Now, Besides all of that, we have some very important conjunctions taking place this week. Um, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because conjunctions are resets of energy. So first we have the moon and Venus, which is going to reset our heart space. We have the moon and Mercury, which is going to reset our head space. And then Venus and Mercury conjunct, which is going to get our heart and our head on the same page in a totally different perspective, mind you, but on the same page nonetheless. So I feel like it's very important to talk about some of these, let's call them minor energy shifts as well, because they all play a very, very important part in the greater, grander picture of things. And our heart and our head have been kind of at each other's throat, so to speak, for a very long time, very confused. One is doing one thing, the other one's doing the other. We have no clue how to get on the same page. This week, we're going to gain some clarity. We're going to talk about that in just a second, um, but definitely a lot going on. Now, before I jump into all my rants, before I start, you know, spitting words all over the place, I just have to address a couple of homework issues, meaning 
I need to start by thanking you. I need to thank you for being here. I need to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank those of you that are financially contributing to the channel now. Thank you so much. The generosity literally just makes my eyes and my heart swell up each and every single time. And I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon. So I want to talk about Patreon for just a second. Um, because we are in a new month, you, even as a free member, are able to go over to my Patreon and go back and listen to the July Zodiac forecast that, of course, I put out every month for my paid members. So as the months kind of come to pass, once we move into a new month, I do make that content free for everyone. It does go public. So if you want to jump over and kind of listen to what July was supposed to be for you, just to kind of get up to speed, I'm definitely going to recommend you do that. I also want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon and actually have become a paid member. The love and support over there in that community is just overwhelming. I want to thank you all so much for that. And of course, as new members, you can go up to your feed page at the top of the feed and select whatever tier you signed up to. And you're going to see all the content that I've posted um, that you now have access to. There are mini courses over there. There are astro classes. There are rants. There's all kinds of information, all kinds of content over there that will consume you for the first couple of weeks of your new membership. So I want to thank you so much uh, to everyone that is jumping over to Patreon. And of course, everyone that is continuing to stay on Patreon, the continued love and support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about it's August. If you haven't listened to the August energy forecast, like, I don't know, like, what have you been doing? Okay. You got to stay ahead of the game. We are at such a pivotal point of this video game that we call life that I can't for the life of me understand why you'd be sleeping on yourself this far into it. Okay. The August energy forecast is there for the collective energy read. Again, you can listen to the year ahead reading part two that I put out for July to December, like the second half of this year to kind of figure out some of the major astrology shifts that are taking place. But even more than that, like the monthly energy forecast that I put out there are to try and keep you in alignment and ahead of the game so that you're not crying. You're not, you know, taken off guard that you're not wondering like what the F is going on is all there. Okay. And it's free. Listen to it. Okay. Now, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, the Zodiac forecasts, okay, specifically for your sun sign, your rising sign, your moon sign, they are there for your listening pleasure as well. If you want to go to my website and download them one by one, it's probably going to cost you a little bit more than to just be a Patreon subscriber. But you could, if you're, you know, some people don't want to join up to another platform, to another app, to another subscription. I get it. Thus the hesitancy to become a Patreon member. But I opened that particular content up to all members, all tiers. So you're not only saving yourself some money by becoming a bronze tier member, but you're getting a whole lot more content than just the Zodiac forecast. Again, listening to your big three is going to give you the bigger, greater, grander picture of what's coming at you for the month. This is a major pivot month. I would really, really encourage you to stay in alignment and stay ahead of the game. Now, we do have a new moon in Leo coming at us. I would love to say that the moon guide is available for your downloading pleasure as of right now, but it's not. It will be tomorrow. Why don't I have it available for today? Well, first of all, because I'm a procrastinator. Secondly to that, it's not time. Okay, we're still in cancer energy. I want to talk about this for a second, and I'm trying really hard not to go on a rant, but now is the right segue to do it. So let's talk about it. The last couple of days, we've had the moon and cancer energy. Everyone struggles with the moon and cancer energy. Why? Because it's, it's first of all, the moon is in our rulership and cancer energy. So there's an intensity there. But the moon is our unconscious selves. It's our feelings. It's our intuition. It's our sensitivity. And in cancer energy, it's the foundation of who it is that we are. It's the foundation of what we're trying to build. It's our emotional disposition, our generational trauma, our inner child wounds, our wounds with the mother role, with the nurturing role, with the boundaries that are being tested over and over and time and time again. 
it never feels good to have the moon in cancer energy, but it is absolutely necessary. Now this particular, let's call it time around, um, the moon in cancer is even more intense because we're still technically under the new moon in cancer influence that began a month ago. Until we have the new moon in Leo pop off on the 4th, we are still under the influence of the new moon cancer cycle, which means that the moon in cancer for the last couple of days has been a absolute throwback flashback to cancer season. And I don't know about y'all, but cancer season was not fun. It's not supposed to be that solstice energy is there to basically reset us karmically speaking and does not feel good to face endings and closures it does not fe feel good to face your shadow self to face your wounds to face your trauma, to face all of that. It doesn't feel good, okay? So the last couple of days haven't felt good for a reason. Now, fun fact here, we're lucky that we are in Leo season having this flashback because the Leo energy, first of all, puts us in the heart space, but puts us in the heart space where we're bold and brave and courageous enough to actually reprocess what we whined and cried about having to go through and grow through back in cancer season. We are rising to the challenge. We are rising to, I'm gonna call it the uh, uncomfortability or discomfort, if you wanna use that word. I like uncomfortability better. I think it sounds fun. Add that to the Marley dictionary, the Marleyisms, if you will. Um, I just feel like we have, a, am gonna say a better perspective of the pain of the trauma that we've had to go through a better perspective of how we've been healing how we've been basically kind of growing through what we've been going through we have a better mood a better attitude about it in leo season and lucky for us the moon in cancer is coming to an end but the minute that it does and it will be coming to an end here early saturday august 3rd we shift into that leo energy may i remind you we're already in the dark phase of the moon a new moon is the dark phase of the moon there's no illumination in the sky we have to sit with ourselves we have to sit in the darkness we have to sit with our shadow we have to sit with all of the things that we are just fed up with we have to realize what it is that we no longer want no longer want to do what we no longer want to build what we no longer want to create what we no longer want to experience that's the whole point of a new moon we have to identify what we're done with what's over again um, a new moon is a conjunction between the sun and the moon and the conjunction is an ending just as much as it is a beginning. That's why I call it a reset. And what we're resetting is our heart space. This is the Leo energy. But right now, as I'm coming to you here Friday evening, live in the chat, thank you so much for being here. The moon is still in cancer energy and nearing the final degrees of this cancer energy, which is no joke. It intensifies. And so this is why... Um, I don't put the moon guides out until we actually enter into the actual energy of the moon because you're not, your unconscious self isn't being triggered and activated and influenced in the way that we need it to be in order to do a deep dive in the shadow work that the moon guides help you dive into. So that all being said, the moon guide will be available for download here on Saturday. I'm going to encourage you to get in alignment with those energies, do the work as we move through this major, major transitional period. And we're about to pivot in our heart space in a big way. OK, that was my moon guide brand. Uh, back to my homework list for a second. Um, we're in a new month. You can go on my website. You can download the energy calendar for the month. And this is, again, a great way to know what kind of month you're about to have, especially if you're well versed in astrology, map out your moon cycle, map out your, let's call it cycle placements. Um, maybe, you know, if you're born around this time, maybe you have a birthday, maybe you have your mercurial return, your Venus return. If you're not, then maybe you're being squared. Maybe you're being opposed. All of these things give you a clear timeline on the struggle that you're dealing with in life. And this is why we need to know astrology. Astrology is the cheat code to the matrix. And so I'm a firm believer that you have to know all your placements. You have to map out your month ahead in order to understand when you're going to be pressurized with a choice point. You know, if your placements are being squared right now, that's a growing pain. 
And if it's a first quarter placement square, then you're growing pains because you're trying to grow into something new. It's a, if it's a fourth quarter, then you're in the elimination process, trying to kind of get rid of the dead weight before you kind of see a brand new beginning take place and take form in your life again. If you're being opposed with some of your placements, you need to know that too. You're going to be torn. You're going to be on the fence about something. You're going to have a dramatic pivot point already present itself to you. Again, another reason why I create the calendars and why I'm encouraging you to download the calendar. So that is there for your downloading pleasure as well. Again, if you're on Patreon, all of that content is free and available to you. And the last thing that I want to talk about is that my booking calendar for August is now available to the public. My Patreons, they, they're, they're my VIPs. They get dibs. They get to snag up the spots in my calendar before it goes public. Um, there are still some spots left. However, a good chunk of the better part of the first part of August anyway has already been uh, reserved for my VIPs. But nonetheless, if you're interested in working with me in any kind of capacity, check out my calendar. Okay. That is all that I want to talk about. Let's rant and rave for a second. I need to talk about this Lionsgate. Oh my goodness. I think I do this every year, but I'm going to do it again. The Lionsgate portal is a bunch of kafui. And I mean that in the nicest of ways. And you're going to say, well, if it's a bunch of kafui, why are you talking about it? Well, because in the past when I didn't talk about it, I have a whole shit ton of people coming at me, asking me why. I'm not talking about the Lionsgate portal. What does the Lionsgate portal mean? Where it's going to take place in my chart? What is it going to be? What is it going to be? So when you listen to my August energy forecast, yeah, I talk about the Lionsgate portal. When you listen to the Zodiac forecast, I talk about the Lionsgate portal. I'm also very specific when I do talk about it to say that it's not a real portal. Let me talk about this for two seconds. Okay, so the whole Lionsgate portal is supposed to be, okay, we're talking supposed to be, supposed to be between July 26th and August 12th. At that time, the Lionsgate portal is supposed to be in alignment with the star Sirius, which happens to be our spiritual sun, okay? Then there's an alignment with that Sirius star over, well, basically over the pyramids of Giza, okay? There's a whole alignment. And the Lionsgate, although it is taking place in Leo season, it stems from the Phoenix, right? There's all of these angles over in Egypt where the pyramids, where the Sphinx is concerned. There's all of these angles that when they align with the right star system, that that was like a huge thing for our ancestors. It was a huge download of energy for the cosmos where we're able to align with our higher selves, where we're able to align with the higher realms of intelligence, where we receive downloads, where we, we receive insight. Now, once upon a time, and I'm sure it's happened a couple of times since then, there has actually been the true alignment. The, the Sirius star has been in alignment with the Orion's bell, the Orion's bell over the pyramids of Giza, the alignment with the Sphinx, all the angles, you know, they all checked off all the boxes. That is a true portal. That is a true alignment. That is where the Lion's Gate portal came from. Now, even to further that, the sun is supposed to further on, carry on after those particular alignments and align with the star Regularis, okay? Regularis, like the, the most brightest star supposedly in the Leo constellation, if you will, however, downloads us with a new sense of pride, new sense of courage and bravery to pivot after the timeline jump of the Lion's Gate portal is supposed to initiate this whole thing. Here, here's the issue, okay? And stay with me, okay? Stay with me. I know August, the eighth month, the eighth day, sounds pretty cool, okay? Numerologically speaking, sounds pretty cool. They do it in July on the 7th. They do it in June on the 6th. They do it in May on the 5th, so on and so forth, okay? Are they actual portals? 100% no. Is it a fun concept? 100% yes. Okay, here's the thing. Sirius, I'm, I'm going to get real with you here. Sirius is currently at 14 degrees in Cancer energy. Regularis 
is at zero degrees, 10 minutes in Virgo energy. Okay? There is no alignment. There is no lion's gate. There is no regulars. There is no serious alignment. That happened back in cancer season with Sirius. Regularis will happen when we move into Virgo season. Is anything actually happening on 8-8? Absolutely not. Okay. Why do I talk about it then? Why am I playing into this new age community foo-foo? Because here's the thing. Majority wins. What the collective believes in, what the collective focuses their energy on is what is going to manifest. Is there harm in talking a bunch of foolishness to get everybody basically in a global meditation, a global focus on their heart space, on happiness, on the happiness that they want to bring to earth, the heaven that they want to create on earth? Is there any harm in that? Absolutely not. We're going to promote it. We're going to shoot ourselves in the most positive of lights to our higher selves, to the higher realms of intelligence. We are just going to shoot ourselves up into the sky, up into the star space. And we are going to pretend that we are in alignment with all of these things. Okay. It is pretending. It is belief. Let's talk about belief for a second. What do we got going on where beliefs are concerned? Oh, that's right. We have Neptune and Saturn both retrograde in Pisces energy, in belief. Okay, so our beliefs, they hold a great power. This is why if you believe that you are the worst person in the world, guess what you are? If you believe that you are the best person in the world, guess what you are? If you believe that you were in love, guess what you are? If you believe that you will never find love, guess what you won't? It all comes down to belief. We are all fragmented parts of the creator source consciousness here to have an individualized experience. We are not supposed to be believing the same thing. We are not supposed to be having the same experiences. We are all one when we are in soul and spirit and source. On this earth plane, in these physical bodies, in these physical meat suits, we are individuals. That's what we are here to do. Yes, we need to unify, meaning all get on the same page to want to bring heaven on earth. But we all have different talents, different skills, different ways of channeling that high vibrational frequencies into our physical body that anchors it here on the physical earth. We all have to do it in our own individual ways. The Leo energy, I want to talk about this. I'm going full circle with this. The Leo energy is about our individual selves, about our unique individual selves, about our unique skills and talents that we here as individuals are here to fully express through our heart space, through our authenticity of being our unique individual selves here on this earth plane. Okay. Now, Lionsgate portal 88. Is anything happening on 88? Hell no, there isn't. I'm even going to, I'll even give you this far. Okay. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the forecast here right now, what we have going on on August 8th. Well, first of all, the moon is going to be shifting from Virgo energy to Leo energy. Well, that's exciting. We have six different aspects popping off on that day. All six involve the moon, which means that it's a moon day which means that we need to be all up in the fields. We need to do some emotional refinement. And if we are bold and brave and courageous enough in this Leo season to align with our heart space and get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves and operate from our most authentic vibrational frequency from our heart space, we can 100% identify new wants, new needs, new desires, where we have a new zest for life, a new spiciness to bring to our individualized experience here on this earth plane. There is nothing going on on 88 other than a collective of beautiful people focused on something major that at one time, years and years and years and years ago was actually real. Okay. It is no different than believing in the boogeyman, no different than believing in Santa Claus. If you believe in them, great. If you don't, doesn't matter. One thing that I will say is the reason why I talk about it, the reason why I kind of, you know, contribute to the spiritual psychosis of this new age movement where the Lionsgate portal is concerned is because when I did not in the past, I actually had more people come at me angrily, right? Like we're supposed to be a bunch of love and light type of people around here, even though I don't buy into that concept either. 
angrily talk about the fact that why didn't you talk about the Lionsgate portal? Why aren't you talking about the 8A portal? Why aren't you talking about this? This is the most magical time ever. No, it's not. It's just in your mind. Every day is magical if you think that it has a certain significance. My birthday is a magical time for me. It doesn't mean that everybody is having a magical time. That's my solar return. Just like your birthday is a magical time for you, but it doesn't mean that everybody needs to think that it's magical. However, if you get a bunch of people together in the same room and they all focus on you singing happy birthday and that they hope that you have the best year yet, guess what? That amplifies the magic of your birthday. Similarly, if we have people all over the world believe that there's something major happening on a particular day, guess what? It's magical. Just like, don't know if you, I'm really gonna throw y'all for a loop now. Don't know if you realize it, but we've created AI. We are the AI, okay? People sitting around talking about computers being the AI. No, we're the AI. We are aligning our consciousness with other people's consciousness, creating a hive mind. A lot of the things that are taking place on our greater, grander global stage right now are happening because many people are focused on it happening. That's why prayer is so important, even though I don't buy on prayer because prayer is basically praying. I, I'm not talking about P-R-A-Y because really what you're doing is P-R-E-Y. Uh, you're praying on trying to mess up the cosmos. I actually don't understand prayer. I know it's a hopeful thing. I know it feels nice to do. Um, but if you take a look at, you know, the concepts of we're exactly where it is that we're supposed to be, and we have to trust God, the creator source that he divinely scripted all events that are currently taking place, then wouldn't prayer actually be interrupting karma? Like, why are we praying for things at all when we are exactly where we need to be with what we need to have at the time? Anyways, maybe that's a rant for another time. I, I, I just, I can't. I can't wrap my head around why we are praying, thinking that we are special, that, you know, God creator or source is going to answer our prayers for a close parking spot when, you know, he could be answering prayers in more devastating type of situations and circumstances. To me, prayer is in alignment with trying to manifest a situation that wasn't divinely scripted for you. But anyways, like I said, another topic, another theme for another day. Basically, what I'm getting at is when you concentrate a focus, such as the collective, focusing in on what this 88 Lionsgate portal is supposed to be, you do have magic, you do have power, you do have potential to, to change the game. Just like, like I obviously, I already mentioned this, a lot of the things that are taking place, especially in the timeline jumps that we find ourselves choosing from at this particular juncture in the calendar, a lot of the things that are taking place on the greater grander stage is because the majority of the collective is focused on that energy on those events on a particular narrative on the particular outcome that's why we say that it's so important not to live in fear because when you're living in fear you're actually creating situations and circumstances that fear manifests out of and so this is why we're being tested in the year of eight that we're currently in to see if we have power and control over our emotions and over our headspace, over our concentration, over our attention, over our focus, because if we pass, which hopefully most of us will, we get to activate creator abilities within us so that we can start creating the realm and reality that start matching the inner realm of vibration and frequency that we're currently operating at. But we have to be very careful with our focus. We have to be very careful with what it is that collectively we are all focused on. This is why you can't watch the news. This is why you can't be bombarded day in and day out with death here, crisis here, scarcity there, lack of there. Yes, I know what's going on. I'm not saying live in a state of delusion. What I'm saying is the more you can fine tune your focus on the positives, the more you can fine tune that focus on a positive outcome or a positive resolution, of a lot of not so nice situations and circumstances, the more people that back that particular focus, the high, the, there's a higher probability that it's actually going to happen. There's power in numbers. Yes, 8-8 is a numerological number, but if you wanna get down to it, 
are we actually living in the eighth month? Nope. We're actually living in the fifth month. Why? Because again, the modern day calendar goes from January to December. The actual astrological calendar goes from March back to March. You know, that's what the Zodiac wheel is there for. We entered into August and are currently in August in Leo season. Leo season, the fifth Zodiac sign. We're actually in the fifth month. That's why when you listen to my forecasts, I usually ramble on and say, modern day calendar tells us we're in the eighth month. Zodiac calendar tells us we're in the fifth month, which means that, and then I use the numerological values to understand the imprint, the probability, the imprint that we're actually able to have energetically on the month in which we're supposed to have. So is the Lionsgate portal actually real? I'm going to leave that up to you. What is real? Okay, this is where we're at. Not even with the Lionsgate portal, with everything. What is real? What makes something real, right? And so this is just like an interesting mind effery where we're at in this spiritual game. That's all the time and energy that I am going to put into the Lionsgate portal. Okay, so moving on, we are in a very interesting chapter where, like I mentioned, the new moon cancer energy is coming to the end the minute that we dive into this new moon in Leo. The new moon in Leo, huge heart activations. I want you to pay attention to your heart space. Now let's talk about heart activations for a little minute. A heart act activation is energetically a trigger, a catalyst that allows unconscious, repressed, ignored emotion to rise to the surface. But biologically speaking, we could have indigestion. We could have flutters in our heart. We could feel like our heart is kind of, you know, beating in a very irregular pattern. We could have an air bubble on our heart space. Let's talk about the back because the heart actually radiates into the back. The back, you could have upper back issues. Maybe you're trying to crack your neck. Maybe you're feeling shoulder blade pain. Um, a lot of these heart activations do manifest in some not so nice feelings. This is where the ascension symptoms come from because it's trapped energy. And the trapped energy needs you to feel uncomfortable in order to bring attention to it because our bodies are messengers for our soul and our spirit. Our soul and our spirit, if you don't speak energetic language, if you don't speak soul language or spirit language, the only way that your soul and your spirit can get your attention is through the physical form. And so the physical form manifests in these energy blockages, manifests in aches and pains or certain, you know, sensations in order for you to bring attention and awareness to that. Heart activations can come in many forms. They are happening good, bad, or otherwise. Um, a lot of this is because, again, this particular new moon in Leo comes with breakdown slash breakthrough energies. This is a pivot point. You know, we are in the heart and soul of the Zodiac. The heart is the middle chakra. Um, when we talk about chakra work, the heart, the heart needs to be open, activated and aligned in order for you to stabilize your lower chakras that connect you to the survival programming of the physical body, of the physical form of this earth plane. The upper chakras connect you with the cosmos, connect you with the collective, connect you with your soul, with your spirit, with, you know, everything metaphysical. But that heart chakra, mid heart, right? The earth, I'm really going on a tangent here. The earth in placement of the solar system, solar system, S-O-U-L-A-R, solar system, don't come at me, flat earthers, round earthers, solar system, firmament, don't come at me. Do not, don't do it. If you want to know my stance on it, jump over to Patreon, listen to my content. Been talking about it for 15 years, okay? Anyways, solar system, our heart chakra and the earth are the same vibration and frequency, 7.283 hertz. That's where the ascension, you know, Schumann resonance, where all of that gets calculated, where all of that gets measured. When you take the letters that make up earth and you rearrange them, it does spell heart. Um, green earth, green heart chakra. Okay. There's a lot of connections there. We need to be vibrating at a 528 in order for that, you know, heart space to be truly open, truly activated at the appropriate type of revolution to make 
that heart space strong enough to hold its ground, to have the boundaries to keep out the bad, to have the boundaries to keep in the good, okay? This is energetic refinement. You're, it's, it's a muscle, just like you go to the gym to, you know, train those physical muscles. You got to move into your meditation to your spiritual practice in order to flex your energetic muscles. Your heart space is the conductor between this physical realm and the higher realm. And that's why the heart chakra needs to be, you know, constantly needs to be nurtured, constantly needs to have attention and awareness. That's why we have as many heart activations as we need, because we need to release the repressed and un, let's call it unacknowledged emotion from our earthly experiences and from our soul and spirit experiences in order to lighten the load, in order to receive new love, new creativity, right? So it, the, the whole heart activation thing doesn't feel good, but it is 100% necessary. And especially paying attention to where your heart activations actually take place. If you have indigestion, if you have those flutters in your heart, typically speaking, you're going to associate that with the front of your body. If you're having, you know, I'm going to say shoulder blade, shoulder blade pain or back issues, that is heart activations in that area. But you're talking about past repressed emotions, right? The front is like current situations that you're either currently trying to ignore or currently trying to uh, repress um, that you're currently facing that you need to acknowledge before you can move forward. The back pain is, you know, the past creeping in, creating these activations in order for a release. So we're going through it. Um, we have a huge amount of emotional baggage that we're not taking with us, you know, into this new moon Leo chapter, but we're going to feel the weight of that particular emotional baggage weigh very heavily on our heart space. So I want to talk about the thirst. We are in a fire season now. Uh, because we were in a fire season, but we're still very dominant in the water energy of cancer season. There's still a lot of emotion there. There's still a lot of puffiness there. There's still a lot of water weight there. Now, when we move through this new moon in Leo, we are not going to have as much water there, which means that we're going to dehydrate, which means that we literally have a thirst. Thirst biologically, meaning we want to drink all the water, drink all the things for our physical body's sake. The thirst is actually coming with new passions, new desires, the thirst of information, the thirst of knowledge, the thirst of having some excitement be infused back into our physical realms. Um, I did talk last week about how our hunger was changing. Thank you for those of you that actually seen my humor in talking about eating horses of course, and, you know, not wanting PETA to be called on me. I think that sometimes when I explain my humor and explain my sarcasm, more people get it because I didn't have nearly as many weird weirdos in my inbox, you know, talking smack to me this week. Um, a lot of people found humor in that. Thank you so much for being my people. Um, but yeah, the hunger is increasing. And especially once we go through this new moon in Leo, it feels like there's going to be changes to the food in which we're craving the changes to the diet, especially where protein and fats are concerned. Because, again, I want you to think of it this way. When we're moving through a particular zodiac season, we embody the representative of that zodiac energy. And in Leo season, it's the lion and lions aren't sitting around eating salad. OK, they want that horse. They want that zebra. They want that elk. OK, they want a high protein, high fatty diet. Why? Because they're about to go in hi hibernation. Why do I say that? You may ask. Well, because the sun reaches its freaking peak in Leo season. This is what this is all about, guys. The sun, which is the life force energy that keeps us all going here. The sun is now going to be on the decline, right? He's reached his highest peak potency here in the Leo energy. You can't get any more strong, stronger, stronger, in this Leo energy than the sun in his rulership. We're embodying the qualities and characteristics of a lion. That's where our cravings are coming from. That's where the diet change is coming from. Now we're going to watch the sun start declining. When it reaches the, let's call it, axis of equivalence on its declination, that's when we reach the equinox energy. 
when it reaches its absolute lowest peak, that is the winter solstice. That is when the sun basically stands still for three days being crucified on the longitude latitude around Christmas. This is why all of this, you know, all of this connects. And again, I have a whole lot of content about all of my thoughts and all of these connections on, on my Patreon. Um, this is why the sun, we follow the sun, the sun, why there's been sun worship. So in astrology, you know, you have the Christians and Christians, I'm not coming at you. I'm just using this for an example. The Christians follow the sun. They follow Jesus. Okay. And, and this is why they think that astrology is bad because they see us worshiping the sun, right? Like the sun in the sky. We follow the sun through the zodiac wheel. We adjust ourselves accordingly. The sun is the evolution of our soul and our spirit. But this is why there's a huge group of people that think that astrology is the work of, you know, Satan himself because we're choosing to worship a ball in the sky, which technically at this point is a false ball anyways. And they choose to worship a quote unquote figur figurative character. And I say that with as much respect as I possibly can. Their son and our son, the exact same son. At the, down to the nitty gritty of it, down to all of the allegories, down to all of the stories. It's the exact same sun. They just choose to personify it through man, through carbon man. We're choosing to personify it as following the sun throughout the sky, throughout the cosmos, throughout the zodiac wheel. Why? Because our ancestors did it, right? So, you know, there's a whole lot of correlation there. But basically, back to the hunger thing, that we're going to be hungry for foods that are a little bit more raw in nature, meaning, um, you know, even if you're vegan, I get it. Please don't come for me. Um, I understand we shouldn't kill animals. I understand all that. Don't come for me. But at the same time, if you look back in our history, uh, animal proteins are a major contributing factor to our overall health and wellness. Now, again, a couple weeks ago, you heard me rant and rave and pick apart the food pyramid table. I do understand the corruptedness about what we've been told is good versus bad. I get all of that. All I'm saying is, is that we're aligning and embodying the qualities and characteristics of Leo energy, the lion and lions don't eat salad. They don't eat berries. They want themselves a nice rump roast. Okay. Do what do you do? What's good for you? Do what you got to do. Okay. So Mercury is going to be going retrograde. Now, if you take a listen to um, the August energy forecast, you would know that we're going retrograde four degrees in Virgo energy in his rulership. And that is going to carry a huge, huge weight in our headspace. We're going to have bobblehead syndrome. Okay. We're going to have some head pressure. We're going to feel dizzy. We're going to feel confused. The what the F is going on? Who the F am I? Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I going? All of those things. Keep in mind, the Virgo energy analyzes, evaluates, discerns, picks things apart, breaks things down to the smallest minute minute of detail. How do we get here? What choices did we make that landed us in this situation? Do we still stand by those choices? Answer, spoiler alert, probably not. Um, what does that mean? That means that the Virgo energy can process what and who needs to stay, needs to go. We get to be a little bit more businesslike in our affections and our mentality. We just get to weed things out. You're not serving a purpose. You're actually self-sabotaging. You're not the best that I can do. You need to go. Or, you know, I'm not talking about just people here. I'm talking about aspects, routines, the way you're moving throughout your day, your inner dialogue, your mental health, whatever the case may be, it's time for us to do better. And the very first part of Mercury going retrograde always creates way more confusion, way more delusion, way more headspace pressure um, than it does, typically speaking, throughout the whole transit. So we're definitely going to be feeling that first and foremost. With that comes some sinus issues, because again, third eye, um, our intellect is taking a back seat. Our intellect is going unconscious and we are going to tap into our third eye or intuition in order to kind of reevaluate, reanalyze from our higher self, see things from a different set of eyes, so to speak. So that sinus pressure could come back in. You may find that you have 
uh, a little bit of a, a leaky nose or a sneezy face for a couple of days there and then all of a sudden it clears up. That congestion though can drip down in the back of your throat, post nasal drip, okay, pay attention for that could mean that you're clearing your throat again mercury rules over communication we're not going to be very good communicators so we're going to be biting our tongue on a lot of things we're going to be choked up a little bit we're going to have this sensation in the back of our throat and it could lead to some sporadic unexpected coughing events that disgustingly enough has us coughing up chunks of phlegm we got to get that out it's just it's gross but it, it it's got to happen um I want to talk about itchiness. So we've been talking about how itchiness is an indication of healing. And even though itchiness is not fun to experience, it is a very good indicator, especially with the area of body that you find the itchiness kind of erupting in that that particular area of body, especially where that emotional energy blockage was once very alive and well, is now being cleared out, now being removed. The itchiness is going to be a little bit different this week, I think, particularly um, it's almost like a tingling sensation, like the cobweb sensation. Um, it could be a wave of tingles or a wave of goosebumps, so to speak. Um, it's almost like it's an itch that you just can't scratch. It does feel like you want to scratch it, but you can't find it to scratch it. The tingle sensation, like, you know, you got something on you or a piece of hair that you just can't get off you or spider webs or whatever like that. It doesn't feel nice. Um, it's very distracting a lot of the times. And I feel like, again, pay attention. It could happen to air, any area of your body. But I think most of us are going to experience this in our leg region. Why? Well, because our legs need to work in order for us to put one foot in front of the other. Um, funny observation. I talked about this in the new moon in Leo forecast that I put out there. This new moon in Leo is taking place at 12 degrees, 34 minutes. And when you spell that out, it's one, two, three, four. And numerolo numerologically, again, add that to the Marleyism dictionary. Um, speaking, that to me screams you have you're you're starting a new chapter. You have to put one foot in front of the other. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're starting to march forward. This is the pivot point. We're not looking back anymore. We're looking forward. But that forward movement means that whatever fear is still kind of alive and well in us, that's going to manifest in our legs. We hold fear in our knees, most, mostly. That's like the dominant place for it. We hold fears, doubts, and insecurities for what is to come in our legs. And I, I, I mean, it makes sense. If you can't move your legs, you're, you're standing still right? We don't want to stand still. We want to move forward. We don't really know where we're going, but we know we're not staying here. So we're just going to put one foot in front of the other until we realize that we're actually moving forward. Now that forward motion is going to feel, um, very discombobulating because again, our head space, our heart space is now looking back. Uh, so we're like moving forward while thinking about looking back and we have no clue where we're going. We have no desire to go back to where we're coming from, but the answer for us on where it is that we're moving forward is found by looking back. So again, we're going to feel torn. We need to try and keep ourselves in alignment where we're going to feel torn. So the itchiness, the tingle sensation, the waves of tingleness, the, the goosebumpies, if you will, regardless of where they're showing up and manifesting in your physical form, good signs that we're breaking up those energy blockages, we're breaking up those clumps of fears and doubts and insecurities, and we're moving on regardless of whether or not we know where we're going, whether or not we feel uh, fear or not, we're just moving on. We have a new level of courage and bravery being downloaded to us with this new moon in Leo, being in this Leo part of the zodiac wheel, that is where we build in confidence. That is where we build and courage. That is where we kind of kick fear to the curb, so to speak, or just keep a forward movement walking through it. So I want to talk about sleep for a second. Sleep has been very different. I want to talk about this. I've had a lot of people um, kind of say that they feel more spiritually attacked over this past week. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, just when we level up, just when we kind of, you know, tap into the new version of self, into our new power, 
the boundaries change, the rules change. And we always see a little bit more of a kerfuffle where the spiritual battle, spiritual war, psychic attacks, energy attacks, all of those things. We always see an uprising of that, a, a new intensity level of that when we shift timelines, which we just did July 13th, um, especially with the new version of self that we're now like firmly anchoring in. It's funny because I didn't sleep for four days. I slept last night, which was amazing. Thank goodness for that. But prior to last night, I didn't sleep for four days. Literally, I counted up the very little sleep that I did get over those four days. And I think I was at like three solid hours uh, accumulative of those four days of sleep. And in my waking life, I don't really feel attacked. I feel like, you know, the chaos of my physical life has simmered down a little bit. But I think it's interesting because to me, when I don't sleep, it's because I'm not allowed to be in the astral realm because there are wars being fought in the astral realm that I'm not supposed to be part of. So I thought it was an interesting dynamic. I really wouldn't have actually even brought up the fact that I feel spiritually attacked or that I feel like there is an energetic war, you know, peaking around over, the, especially over last week. I thought it was semi quiet. Um, but then I had all these people say that they were experiencing, you know, influx of conflict in their life and demons coming out of nowhere and really challenging their boundaries and just chaos, chaos and craziness. I had that a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, we're not, we don't all have to experience it in the same ways. But then when I got to thinking about it, I was like, you know what? It's probably why I'm not sleeping because there's no other rhyme or reason why I'm not sleeping. And I know that when I'm not sleeping, it's because I'm not allowed to go into the astral realm. And so our sleep is changing, our dreamscapes are changing. But let me also say this, Mercury is about to go retrograde, which means that pay attention to the flashbacks, pay attention to the past coming back in your present moment in your dreamscape, pay attention to the crypticness, pay attention to old people coming back either in your dreamscape in your daydreams popping into your head or actually showing up physically. Pay attention to that because these are karmic chapters that we have done the healing on that now they're just coming back to see if we've actually healed and actually moved on. Like, this is the funniest thing. Um, people say like, oh my gosh, my ex from seven years ago just randomly, you know, seeked me out and asked me, you know, to meet, meet up with them. And a lot of people romanticize that when I think the complete opposite. I look at that like anybody who is coming back from your past, especially with an emotional karmic connection, such as a romantic partner, let's say, they're coming back because that's, that's the universe's way of testing to see if you're still dumb, to see if you actually learned the lesson or not. So many people out there romanticizing, like y'all been watching too many WTN movies, like the Women Network movies, the Hall Hallmark movies, Y'all got to stop watching that stuff. This is not a time to romanticize people coming back from your past. Let them stay in the past where they belong, right? Do not make light of this. Anybody that comes back from your past is testing you to see if you've actually grown, if you've actually learned the lesson, if you've actually moved on, okay? A lot of the time we have these flashbacks in our dreamscape because A, can't facilitate an actual karmic interaction here in the, in the real world or the reality world, let's call it. Um, our dreamscape, our dreamland is a, let's call it landscape where our unconscious self and let's call it astral karmic connections out in the metaphysical realm have the ability to formulate a scene that will trigger certain thoughts, ideas, memories, emotions in you, even when you wake up from the dream and you go throughout your day. It is said, psychologically speaking, I, I used to do a lot of dream interpretation, a lot of dream work to kind of, you know, help clients unearth the issues that weren't coming to them immediately in their focus in session. Um, we revisit a lot of these topics and themes because in our waking life, we just have no want, need, or desire to visit that part of us. It's almost like the survival part of our ego programming puts those particular parts of memory in an encapsulated box because we just don't want to deal with it. That's what comes out in our unconscious realm. That's what gets triggered and activated in our dreamscape. It is all very important. So again, pay very good attention, especially once Mercury goes retrograde there. 
Um, because again, the Virgo energy at the beginning is helping us to purify. Um, the Virgo energy sits across from Piscean energy. Piscean energy is dream work. It is the astral realm. It is the metaphysical realm. It is our soul car contracts and karma. Um, but the Virgo energy is how that manifests in reality. And the Virgo energy also very rooted in our mental health. And our mental health stems from our unconscious, repressed thoughts, memories, and emotions. So pay attention to what, how your dreamscape is changing, how your sleep is changing, and the content that is coming up, especially where the past is concerned. I have no clue why I have to talk about this, um, but I, I need us all to pay attention of hitting our funny bone. That's right, some kind of elbow injury. I'm not even sure why this is very, why they want me to talk about this this week, other than the fact, the only sense that I can make out of it is that this new energy, especially this new creative energy that gets triggered and activated under the new moon in Leo, it, it's having a hard time reaching our palm chakras. And as you know, we've been working on our palm chakras because we have to activate our palm chakras in order to tap into our creator abilities. Something tells me between the heart activations, the pain, in our back, the weight on our shoulders, that the energy blockage is going to be in our elbows, right? And so something tells me that many of us are going to experience having, you know, hitting that funny bone that isn't so funny in order to break up that energy, in order to break up that blockage so that the energy can kind of travel through our meridians and activate those palm chakras and bring them online to a deeper, more intensified degree than we've been operating at. So pay attention. We're not resisting it. I just want to kind of almost keep you all focused on whether or not that happens to you or not. Maybe we'll take a poll next week in the Ascension forecast chat to see how many people actually hit their funny bone and had that elbow activation. Um, I want to talk about, this is a wild one too, again, uh, your eyelashes. Okay, so we're going to be losing a lot of eyelashes. Go ahead, make a wish for health, wealth, and wellness. Um, but secondary to that, our eyelash line is going to be super itchy. Like literally, like you're going to need to pull your eyelash down and scratch your waterline. That's how itchy our eyes are going to be. Now, itchiness is good. Um, you know, itchiness and y'all, I just got to share this with you. Humming, hummingbirds, two hummingbirds sitting right in front of me right now. Just wanted to share that. That's huge symbolism. Change, 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 change. Okay. Um, the eyelash itchiness. Itchiness is a good thing. Our eyelashes are there to protect our eyes, to, you know, catch the debris, to catch the dust, to prevent our eyes from getting the gunk in it. But now we are, our eyes are changing because we're starting to see things a little bit more clearly. Um, but the defense mechanism that we have right now for not wanting to see life the way that it is and instead the way that we wish it would be, we're not able to do that. Neptune is retrograde. So, you know, we're not able to do that for some reason, because our clarity is coming, because our sight is increasing, because we're, you know, able to see a little tiny bit more of the light spectrum than we were even this time last month. It feels like the boundaries, the defense mechanism of our eyelashes are changing as well. And so energetically speaking, that itchiness is really going to be very, very dominant on that eye eyelash line. The other thing that I want to talk about is sunspots or moles or freckles or marks of some sort changing, especially on the face. Now we are in sun season. The sun is in his rulership and Leo energy. The sun is bringing out, highlighting, illuminating new characteristics within us. Thus, marks on our skin. Our skin is our largest organ. Yes, I know that biologically, holistically speaking, um, we have to pay attention to moles, to marks, to sunspots, to age spots, to liver spots, all of those things as an indicator for our internal health. But energetically speaking, our spots are starting to show, okay? There is an element where we are more anchored into this new version of self. We're not hiding ourselves anymore. Many people out there in the collective abandoning wearing makeup, just showing up as their 725 original self. We love that, right? But the sun activates different parts of our DNA. 
The sun activates different parts of our soul DNA. The sun leaves spots on our physical bodies in order to indicate almost like, you know, the rings of a tree indicates age. The spots on our face indicates change. We are coming more and more and more of our most authentic selves. Our face shapes are changing. The way that we see ourselves are changing. So it only makes sense that we get a couple of new spots in order to indicate that change as well. So guys, that is all the information that I have to share with you here this week. It is a doozy of a week. I'm going to recommend that again, if you need to come back and listen to this forecast a couple of times throughout the week, just to keep yourself in check, that you go ahead, you do that. There's a lot of content out there for all of the energy shifts here this week. Get out your Leo season e-guide if you haven't downloaded it as of yet. This is going to help capture the energy shifts and really, really kind of anchor you into this present moment and give you some really important factors to reflect upon when we move over of Leo season and a lot of those energies that show up in you know the coming of months reflect back to this particular time it is a very potent time of change of transformation and you're going to want to capture what is going on for you in the most detail as possible that's why I do what I do that's why I create what I create that's why the content the information is out there for your downloading pleasure stay ahead of the game so guys, I thank you so much for joining me. I thank you so much for showing up for me. I thank you so much for showing up for yourself. I hope we all have a very, very powerful, changing, heart changing week. I send you nothing but love and I'll talk to you soon.